Hello everyone, Hamaya Sato here, and welcome to the third installment of my Actually Helpful tutorial series. If you haven't seen my first two videos on how to set up a basic ME network or how to create an MAC processor, the links are listed here. In this video I'll be going over some more advanced ME network resources, including import and export buses, storage buses, a quantum network bridge, P2P tunnels, partition editors, and subnetworks. In my last video I stated that I'd be covering how to use spatial storage, but due to the fact that the mod seems to be overly buggy and disabled in the default pack, I decided not to include it in this video. So what are some uses for import and export buses? The first and most primary function of export buses are to export items from your network. Typically I use the precise export buses, I don't often use the basic export buses simply because a basic export bus will just start outputting any item in your network, or sometimes not output anything at all depending on what you have it connected to. The precise export bus allows you to set precise items in your network that you wanted to export. Shown in my first video, I had a tree farm that was collecting wood. So in this scenario, I'll show you how to export oak wood into a furnace. So here I have my precision export bus. I'm going to right click on it, and here you can see a menu of items that it will export. There's also some modes on the right here telling it when it will activate or when it will not activate, and what kind of items in stacks, or if you want it to craft items, which I'll cover in a moment, that it will put into the inventory. So now that I have the export bus set, I want to set an import bus. The import bus will take items back in from the inventory it's attached to and place it back in the network. You need to make sure that the machine that it's attached to is also set to export, just in case it's not working. And now you can see that the network is placing oak wood into the furnace and pulling the charcoal back out when it's completed. Now you can do this with multiple inventories. Now you can see that all the furnaces have oak wood and are creating charcoal and being exported back into the network. So let's say I want my network to automatically craft appetite to feed a multi farm I have nearby. First thing you're going to want to do is have an inventory and an export bus and an import bus attached to that inventory. And then you're going to want to program your network on how to actually make fertilizer. Go ahead and put that in the assembler chamber. Now it knows how to make fertilizer, but we want it to automatically craft it. So now I'm going to take a level emitter and make sure that it's also attached to the network. I'm going to set this level emitter to have fertilizer. I'm going to set it so that it will make fertilizer if it has less than 64 in the network. I could also set it to have more than 64, which is what it's set to now, but as soon as I click on this, it will now emit a redstone signal when it's below or equal to 64. Now I'm going to come to my export bus here and set it to only be active with a redstone signal. So in this case, it's only going to be active if it has less than or equal to 64 fertilizer in the network. And I'm going to go ahead and put fertilizer in here, and I'm going to set it to always craft items. So now it's going to sit here and always craft fertilizer as long as it has a redstone signal. Now obviously it's making way too much here, and that's because our import bus is not able to pull in the fertilizer as fast as the export bus is making it. So in this case, I can place a precision import bus and set it to move stacks of items so that it can actually keep up with the export bus. Another useful feature of the export and import buses are the fuzzy buses. These buses are intended primarily for items with durability or changing names. The most often used for these are bees or to pull cells in and out of nuclear reactors. So here you can see I have some apiary set up with fuzzy export buses and in this chest attached to them I have a lot of drones and bees and with various different names. Now I want to make sure that my buses are actually putting in some forest bees that I want in each of these apiaries. So what I'm going to do is pull out my forest princesses and my forest drones. And for each of these, I'm going to put in the princess and the drone and set the comparison to match any. So now it's going to look for anything called a princess or a drone. If we set the slider on the left to split, it doesn't matter what percentage, it will then only look for anything called a forest princess or a forest drone. 
This is useful for setting hybrids or what species you want to mix together. Again, to pull the bees and items that they create out of the apiaries when it's finished, I have just placed some import buses to extract the items. Now as you can see here, even though I have the export bus to export impregnated frames from the network, it's not placing them in the inventory. This is because the export bus doesn't recognize that part of the inventory, and the only real way I've found to solve this is to use a router from another mod in order to search all parts of the inventory inside the apiary. I won't be covering that in this video, but I will include resources in the description down below if you're interested in learning more about that. So let's say I don't want all the wood and charcoal that these furnaces are going through stored and taking up space on my drives and my network. Over here I have some gold chests set up with storage buses in order to hold the wood and the charcoal. In order to set these up I need to first make sure that the storage priority is set higher than the regular drive. Normally you can just do two but really anything higher than one will make sure it goes into this storage first. You can see I've now set this storage bus to hold the charcoal, and if I look in the chest, you can see it quickly flashing in and then being pulled right back out. This is because most of the charcoal is going over here straight back into the cargo manager in order to fuel the cart that's running. However, if that were to build up, the charcoal would then start filling up in this chest instead. You can see that this chest basically works as an extra form of storage, similar to a drive except that it can't hold nearly as much. Here I have a barrel with a storage bus underneath and an export bus on top. The reason I've done this is because lately I've seen some bugs with a storage bus in a barrel and not recognizing what's inside the barrel. However this can be very useful for holding a large amount of a single type of item if you don't want to spend the resources on making a drive for it. In this case I can set the storage bus to hold charcoal and the export bus to place all the charcoal in the network into the barrel and quickly you can already see the charcoal flashing in and out as it's placing it in there. It's important to configure your storage bus to make sure that the storage priority is higher than anything else if you want to make sure that it's set into that inventory. Another useful feature for your ME network is the quantum network bridge. What this allows you to do is to connect your network remotely across any distance. The first thing to know about the network bridge is that both ends require 40 MJ a tick to power, or in this case 400 RF a tick running the creative energy cell here which is giving it infinite energy. The energy it gets must be separate from the energy you're supplying to your controller. The controller will not power this. In order to set up a quantum bridge you're going to need 16 quantum field rings and two quantum link chambers. They're relatively easy to make. You do a 3x3 ring of the quantum field rings and one quantum link chamber in the center. If you've completed it successfully, you'll see that it forms up to create four larger blocks and four smaller blocks surrounding the link chamber. You're going to want two of these for each end of the network, then you're going to want to power both ends. When it's powered, you can see that the lights quickly turn on the circling blue. If it's not powered, it will dim and fade away. The most difficult part of linking your quantum tunnels together is creating a quantum entangled singularity. In order to create a singularity, you must create an ME condenser and place one storage cluster inside. And then you have to fill it with exactly 524,288 items. The way I usually do this is by filling it with excess cobblestone created either through igneous extruders or gathered from a quarry. There are two ways to empty items into the storage cluster. You can either take a drive and place it in the top, which will then begin emptying all of the items in its storage into the storage cluster, or you can just take items and directly place them inside where it will delete them and accumulate the energy of them. The next step is turning the singularity into a quantum entangled singularity, which is going to require some ender pearl dust and some tiny TNT. Keep in mind that the ender pearl dust you want is not the portal gun ender pearl dust, but in fact the applied energistics ender pearl dust, which will react differently. In order to entangle the two pairs, you're going to drop the singularity on the ground, and then drop the one ender pearl dust on the ground, and place some tiny TNT next to it. You ignite the TNT, and after it explodes, 
It combines the two pieces together to create two quantum entangled singularities. Now it's important to remember that these two singularities are connected only to each other and to keep these separated from any other entangled singularities you create. If you mix them up, you can have problems with your network and going to wrong places that you don't want. Once you have them created, you can go back to your rings and place one part in each of the link chambers. Once you have them placed inside, you can see them start to have a neat little glow in the middle. The final step is to connect your network to each of the rings. And remember that things can only connect to the large blocks in the center part of each side and not on the little blocks. You can place new blocks directly on the quantum field ring or you can use cables running away from it and place them remotely. Both of these access panels now have access to the remote network on the other side of the quantum bridge. Next we'll go over quickly what P2P tunnels are. A P2P tunnel, which stands for peer-to-peer, -peer, is a tunnel that allows you to move any liquid, item, redstone signal, or power from one location to another without requiring any storage in between. Over here you can see an example of where I have one aqueous accumulator connected to a P2P tunnel which is then putting water into my large iron tank here on top. So let's look at connecting the P2P tunnel. Firstly, you can't connect the P2P tunnel directly to the aqueous accumulator. They don't interact very well with each other. What you want to do is have any kind of waterproof pipe or fluid duct coming out the top and connect the P2P tunnel to that. Now in my example shown here, when I right click on the P2P tunnel with a water bucket, you'll see it turn blue. This is indicating that I've set it to intake water. So here I'll go ahead and click blue. And now this step is important for the input. Shift right click on it with my ME bus memory card in order to save this tunnel with any others that I want it to connect to. Up on top here, I'll go ahead and place a new ME tunnel and then I'll right click it with my ME bus memory card telling it that I want this port to go to this port. In this case I can have the one import P2B tunnel going to as many other tunnels as I like but it's important to remember that this memory bus card is loaded from this specific P2P tunnel. If I were to have loaded it from any others these would not be connected to the one specific tunnel. Another example is how it's useful for redstone signals in this case, you can see I have a redstone signal leading up to the P2P tunnel. And I'm going to right click on the tunnel with the redstone in order to turn it red. And I'm going to shift right click again on the tunnel in order to save it to my bus card. Now over here, I'm going to right click on this one in order to have that tunnel going to this tunnel. And if I place redstone on the ground, you can see that it is now continuing that signal from this torch. Let's say you want to speed up your assembler and have it create energy cells while also creating energy conduits. Now normally I wouldn't be able to have multiple interfaces going into multiple magma crucibles because you can't have one interface connected to two machines. In this case I've created a subnetwork with its own controller and its own power source and the main network is importing into the subnetwork where it then sorts the redstone and the energy frame into the separate machines which can then run and then be imported back into the main network. There's a lot of applications in this but it's just important to remember that you can't connect the two different controllers in the same network or you will get the controller conflict. It's important to remember to separate these cables and not have any of the cables shown here touching the interface and these cables. You probably noticed that my storage bus here have green cable. You can create colored ME cable that won't touch cable of other colors unless it's the regular cable, in which case it will connect. You can turn the cable of other buses nearby into the color you like just simply by clicking directly on that bus with the color you want it to become. You can use a partition editor to edit your drives and hold specific items. In this case, Let's pretend I have a quarry that's farming a lot of dirt and I don't want it to go just anywhere. I want to put it on the specific drive that I can dump somewhere else. So I'm going to take my 64k storage and I'm going to place it in the top right. And then I'm going to place dirt in this big inventory here telling it that I only want it to store dirt. 
Now I can name it anything, in this case I'll call it dirt. And I can click format and you can see here that the drive is now named dirt, telling me that it will only hold that. Here on the left you can see a variety of options, including setting it to match items that are close to the name or have certain durability, and this can be useful for storing bees on a specific drive. You can also see that there's an allowed or rejected list, meaning that you can set certain drives to not hold dirt instead of to hold dirt. My final tip is let's say you're using solar panels to power your ME network, but you don't have any way to power it at night. A useful tool called energy cells that you can connect to your network that will hold extra energy when you're powering it and will continue to power it even if it doesn't. You can see here that I have a bunch of energy cells that slowly start to light up. They'll turn a more violet color when they're full of energy, but are blue when they're empty. If I break the power source on my controller, you can see that it is now still powered by all the energy cells I have connected to it. If I break its connection to the energy cells, it's going to quickly run out of power. That's all in my tutorials for applied energistics. In my next video I'll be going over how to set up a tree farm and using different power sources to power your network. If you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below and don't forget to rate and subscribe. Alright, new Diablo 3 patch is out. Super geared wizard. Set this to the hardest difficulty. Yeah, look at me pwn these undead. You fire noobs. What? 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 Yeah, there's an elite. Time to blow him up. He's getting chunked. It's like he's gonna summon all these dudes and these pillars and I'm just gonna be like, nope, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Thanks. See ya. Ba -ba 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 -ba.